Now we'll convert both of these objects into blocks. So for converting into block, you can select this create block tool and now let's give it a name. So I'll name it as window 5 inches. Now click on this pick point and specify a pick point which will be this point, the midpoint of the top line. Now select objects and select all of these objects and press enter. Also here I'll make sure that this delete radio button is checked because I don't want this attribute to be at this place. I want it to be removed and I'll keep all these values at the default. Annotative unchecked, scale uniformly unchecked and allow exploding checked. Now click on OK. And we don't have that geometry anymore but we have its copy here in this insert. So we have it added. Let's repeat the process for this second geometry as well. So I'll go to this create block, give it a name. So let's name it as window 10 inches. Now click on pick points and click on this pick point. Now select objects, select all of these objects and now click on OK. So we have both of these blocks added here. The dim and dim one or the 5 inches and 10 inches block. Now we'll insert both the windows in this drawing and we have two different wall thicknesses. The first one here, the interior walls are of 5 inches and the exterior are of 10 inches. Now in order to add the windows, I'll go to this insert and I'll select the 5 inches block. Now here we have this block. Let's insert it at this point. And as soon as you insert that block, you'll notice this edit attributes window. So that's the difference between a normal block and a block which has attributes. And here we have the prompt enter window size and the default values which we can change. So now we need to enter the size of this window which will enter as the width by length. So let's enter 5 inches by 4 feet. So that's the dimension of this window. Click on OK. And we have that value here. Now let's repeat the process for another window here. So I'll click on this insert, select the 5 inches window and this time I'll select this point and now once again change its value. So I'll type 5 inches by 3 feet and click on OK. So in this way the single block can be used to enter different values using attributes. Similarly, you can insert the second block also. So I'll select this 10 inches window and I'll insert it somewhere over here. And once again, I'll enter the value. So I'll type 10 inches by 4 feet and now click on OK. And here we have it. In a similar way, you can add as many windows as you want in this drawing and they will be added with their respective attribute values. Now in this case, if you don't want the attributes to be visible in the drawing, you can simply hide their visibility using this block panel. So expand the block panel and here on the expanded block panel, you'll see the attribute visibility options. So here we have an option of hiding the attributes. So select hide all attributes and all of the attributes will be hidden. They are still present in the drawing and you can bring them back simply by going to the respective option. So you can select this retain attribute display and they'll be brought back to the drawing. Now in the previous video, I have already mentioned that when you explode a block, it will return back to its respective geometries. Now, if you explode a block containing attribute, it will explode, but it will return back to its original tag values. For example, here we have this window, let's explode it. And to explode it, I'll select X as the command press enter, now select the object and press enter again. And now here the attribute value changed and it's now showing the default tag value which was dim. And that was the original condition of the block before we converted it into a simple block. Now we have this attribute and also these simple geometries. But if you want to retain the attribute information even after exploding the blocks, then you can use burst express tool or the burst command. So instead of exploding it, select burst, press enter and now select the block and press enter again. So in this case also, the block has been exploded. You can see their respective geometries, but the attribute definition or the attribute value has been retained in this case. And this is no longer an attribute values. This is simply a text. So this was all about creating simple attributes and inserting them in our drawing. 
In this video, we'll learn about creating attributed blocks with the help of field information. Now here we have some rooms in this drawing and we have created some views in this drawing as well. So when you go to this view controls, you'll see this custom view option and you'll see these views. Now these views are created already in this drawing. So for example, here we have this hall view and here we have the kitchen view and all the remaining views. Now let's say that we want to create a room label with the view names for all of these rooms. Now for that, I will start with a simple rectangle. So I'll go to the draw panel and I'll select this rectangle tool. Now click anywhere in the drawing area to make the rectangle and I'll make it of this size, something like this. And now we'll add the attribute. So expand the block panel and select this define attributes option or you can obviously use the att command for this now let's enter the tag so i'll enter room as the tag and in the prompt let's enter enter room name in the default value will not enter anything instead we'll click on this box now this will allow us to insert a field in this attribute definition so i'll click here and now this field window will pop up now from here, I'll go to this named objects option. So here we have this named object and now we need to select the views. So here on this drop down, select view and we have all the views here which are present in the drawing. So let's select the first one which is hall and I'll select uppercase and here we have the final preview of the field. Now click on OK and that value is added here with this gray background. Now select the justification. I'll select middle center and the text style is a standard. Also, we have six inches text height. So I'll change it. So I'll click on this box and I'll take reference of this rectangle to make the text. So I'll click at this point and I'll click at this point. So that will be the height, which is close to 10 inches and now click on OK. So here we have this tag. So let's place this tag and I'll place it at the center. So click on the center point and the tag will place itself appropriately in this rectangle. Now we'll convert this tag into a block. So I'll go to this create block and now give it a name. So let's name it as room tag. Click on pick point and select the middle point for the pick point. So somewhere around here, now select objects and select all of these objects, press enter and now allow exploding should be checked and also delete radio button should be checked. Now click on OK. And we have the required block added in our drawing. So let's start adding our block. So I'll go to this insert option and I'll select this room tag and I'll add it here. So as you can see that we have the hall here and that's the required field and I'll click on OK. Here we have it. The hall has been added here. Now in a similar way, we will add next tag in this room. This was room one. So I'll go to insert. I'll select room tag. But now in this case, we still have this hall field, which will change. So I'll click here. And now we have this hall field clearly visible. So let's press backspace. And now I'll right click on this field and I'll select this insert field option. Now here we have named object hall and all the settings selected as it was in the previous case, but I'll change this field value to room one and I'll keep all of these settings unchanged. Click on OK and click on OK. Now we have this room one added here. In a similar way, you can add other fields. So I'll add one more block here with the field. So click on this insert, select room tag, click here. Now let's remove it again. Right click, select insert field and add kitchen, click on OK and OK again. So here we have it. So all the three tags are now added here. Now, since these values are fields, so they will update themselves whenever a change is detected. So in this case, we have the kitchen room one and hall. Let's change this room one name. So for that, I'll type V and press enter. So that will take us to the view manager. And here we have all of these views. So here we have this room one. So let's rename this room one and let's name it as Amy's room. So I'll click on this name field and I'll type here Amy's room. Now press enter. 
and here we have the name updated now let's click on apply and then ok and now the value should change but it has not yet changed so in order to change it manually simply type re or rea command so that will regenerate the complete drawing and here we have it amy's room now the field has been updated so that's the advantage of adding blocks with attributes which contain field and this is one of the simplest situations in which this attributed block containing field has been used but there are plenty of other scenarios also mostly in the sheet set when you can use fields in the attributed block in this video i will tell you about the attribute manager tool of autocad and the attribute manager can be used to change the properties of attributes in the blocks so we have this drawing which we have made previously and we have these three attributed blocks added here now let's say that we want to change some of the properties in this attributed block for that we can use the attribute manager tool and it can be accessed from this expanded block panel so expand the block panel and click on this attribute manager tool alternatively you can also use its command equivalent which is b a t t m a n which is quite similar to batman so i'll simply type the command and now press enter so here we have this block attribute manager now in this case you'll see a list of block here on the top so here we have these two attributed blocks so if the drawing contains more than two blocks it will be visible in this list so i'll select this window 10 inches block now all the properties related to that will be visible here and you can modify its properties by selecting this edit button so click on the edit and we have this edit attribute window now we have these three simple tabs the attribute text option and properties let's start with the attribute now this attribute has all the information which you have seen on the attribute window like the tag prompt and default value also we have some of the options here on the mode panel so you can change them as well if you want now here we have this tag value let's say that we want to change this tag value and we want to change it to dim 10 also here we have the text options now if you want to change any of these values for example the text height width factor and all the other settings like the justification or the text style you can do it from here we have some additional properties also for example the layer assignment and the line type and also the color that you can also change from here so let's change this color to green and now the auto preview has been checked so that means the preview will directly be visible in the drawing now click on ok apply and here we have it the preview is visible here now click on ok again and the attribute has been updated here you can also directly access the attribute manager tool by double clicking on the blocks containing attributes so if you double click on the blocks which has attribute value you'll see this enhanced attribute editor window now it is similar to the attribute manager which we have seen and here also we have the attribute text option and the properties now in this case also let's change the color so that will make the changed property quite visible we have the changed property visible here now let's click on ok and here we have it so in this way you can selectively change the properties of different blocks containing attributes now in this case if you want to open the block editor for any of these blocks you can simply select the block then right click and go to block editor so in that way you can open the block editor because simply double clicking a block will open the attribute editor instead of opening the block editor so that was all about attribute manager tool of autocad in this video i will tell you about the data extraction tool and using data extraction tool you can extract a lot of information from your drawing for example in this case we will extract the data related to the attributed blocks and you can export that data into an external file for example a file which is compatible with ms excel or you can also insert it in the current drawing as a table so in this drawing we have these three simple blocks which has attributes now let's say that we want to extract all the information related to these windows or these attributed blocks for that you can type data extraction and now press enter so that will open this data extraction wizard 
Now in this wizard, make sure that the first radio button, create a new data extraction is selected and now start with clicking on this next button. Now it will prompt you to specify the location where you want to save it. So I'll go to desktop and I'll save it with ATT data name and it will be saved with .dxe extension. Now click on save and here we have the location where it will be saved. And this is also the location where our current drawing is. Now we need to select the properties which needs to be extracted. And for that, we need to select this second radio button, which is select objects in current drawing because we want to extract limited number of information from the current drawing. Now after selecting this, click on this settings button and this will open this data extraction window. In this window, make sure that this extract objects from block is checked. And also you can keep this objects in model space checked and that will ensure that all the objects which are only in model space are included. Now click on OK and now we'll click on this box and I'll select the complete geometry. Now click on next. And we have complete information in the form of this table. So obviously we don't need all of this information. We only need the information which is relevant and that's the blocks containing attribute. So for that, I'll click on this checkbox and this will ensure that all the blocks that contain attribute will be listed here and their properties. So here you can see that we have some objects here like these two blocks and also we have these objects which are not blocks. So you can uncheck these objects and they will not appear in our final result. Now we only have the information related to these blocks. Now click on next and here we have the final table with lots of objects. So once again here I'll uncheck in this category filter all the values which we don't want. So we don't want 3D visualization, drawing, general geometry or miscellaneous. We only want attribute related information. Now click on next and here we have our final table. Now in this final table, we have the count for each of the blocks, their dimensions included here as attribute values. Also here, make sure this combined identical rows is checked and also you can check these boxes to include or remove these columns. For example, you can remove the count column if you want or you can remove the name column, but I'll keep all of them checked. Now click on next. And in this page, you need to select the place where you want to put that information. So we have two options. Either you can insert that information as a table or you can extract it as an external file. So I'll select both. And to extract that information, I'll select the location. So I'll once again click on this box, go to desktop and here I'll select ATT data and it will be saved as XLS extension, which can be opened with Microsoft Excel. Now click on save and once again, click on next. Here we have the table, which will be used in this current drawing. Now with the default settings, I'll click on next and then finish. Now the table will be visible on the cursor. So I'll click somewhere over here and the table has been inserted. Although the size of table is very small, so I can increase it simply by using the scale tool. So I'll select a scale, select the complete table, press enter, click at a point here and let's enter a scale factor of 20 and it is still needs to be increased. So I'll select it again, select the scale factor, click at the base point. Now let's enter three. And now we have it of appropriate size. Now you can see that we have the window five inches block with these dimensions here also with these dimensions, their count and all the values. We not only have these here, we also have it on the desktop. So let's minimize the drawing. And here we have this ATT dia as Excel file. And here is all the information. So let's now close it and let's open our drawing. So in this way, you can extract the attribute related information from your AutoCAD drawings easily using the data extraction wizard. Okay, so here is the question related to the module. Now here we need to make a room tag block as shown in this image and add a room occupant name as well as a room number as attributes. Now after doing that, 
insert one of the instances of this attributed block in the drawing and give the room occupant name as Alex and the room number as 24. Now for making this block, we have used a hexagon which is inscribed in a circle of radius 10 units and the text height of attribute is 2.4 unit and it is using simplex.shx font. So to make this attributed block, we need to first start with the hexagon. So I'll go to this draw panel and I'll select the polygon tool. Now type six as number of sides, press enter, click at a point, then select inscribed in a circle and enter a radius of 10 unit and press enter. Now there we have it. Now we need to add a horizontal line. So click on line and add this horizontal line in the hexagon. Now we need to add the attribute values and before adding the attribute value, we need to define the text style as per the requirement. So for that, I'll go to this annotation panel, expand it and click on this text box. Now this will open our text style window. Now here we need to select simplex.shx font or the simplex shape font, which is here. Also, we need to ensure that the text height is 2.4 and now apply, make this current and close it. So now our current text style is applied and we can add attributes and these attributes will take this current text style. So to add the attributes, I'll go to insert tab and now click on define attributes. Now you can add any tag prompt and different values. So in this case, I'll add occupant as the tag and name as the prompt and I'll leave this default value blank and let's click on justification, make it middle center and the text height is already set here. You can see this. We only need to ensure that standard text style is selected. Now click on OK and specify the location. So I'll click somewhere close to this midpoint. There we have it. Now similarly add another attribute also, or you can copy this attribute. So I'll simply go to home tab, select copy and copy this attribute. So I'll click on this point and I'll copy it somewhere over here. Now let's modify this attribute. So for modifying this, I'll double click on it and we need to change the tag and prompt value. So the tag should be room and the prompt should be number or any other value which you want and I'll click on OK. So there we have it. Now we can convert this into our attributed block. So for converting this, I'll go to this create block and give this a name. So let's name it as room tag. Now select the pick point and select this middle point. Then make sure convert to block is selected and click select objects and select all of them and press enter. Also make sure allow exploding is checked and open in block editor is unchecked and click on OK. And there we have it. We have the number and name. So the number should be 24 as per our question and the name is Alex. OK and click on OK. And there we have it. We have the attributed block here with the occupant name as Alex and the room number as 24. So now let's start with the external references. So the external references or the short for XREF are the files which are inserted in a drawing as an external data link or a reference. Now this is a collaboration tool in which multiple drawings are referenced inside a single drawing or more than one drawings and more than one designer drafters can work on different drawings at a particular time using external references. Visually external references and blocks are quite similar, but there are many subtle and big differences in between these two tools. So the external references are generally attached as a data link. And whenever the original file is modified, the attached data link is automatically refreshed. The new data is included again in the drawing. The blocks are the native parts of the drawing. They are not referenced in drawing in any way. Now, whenever an external reference is attached, 
the file size does not change because we are only referencing the file inside a drawing we are not including or inserting a file within a drawing so there is no change on the file size whereas when you insert a block within a drawing the file size will increase using external references a team of designers can work on different files and those files can be imported in a single drawing as external references and in this way a team can work on a project but in case of block only a single person can access a drawing or you can say that a single instance of the drawing can remain open at a particular time so the external references can be attached as dwg image file the png and jpeg formats the pdf DGN and point clouds whereas the blocks are native DWG file and they are of DWG extension so I'll explain this external references tool with the help of a very simple example now here we have this drawing in which we have this external rectangle which is present in this xref drawing and also we have this circle now this circle is a reference or an external reference and this is simply a reference of the original circle which is present on our desktop so i'll minimize this drawing now here we have this circle now let's open this and the circle drawing is open and here we have it now this is the circle which has been inserted in this xref drawing as an external reference now if the original circle drawing is modified here for example here we have the circle drawing if we modify this the change will be automatically transferred to this drawing as well using the external reference so i'll just modify this so i'll make the circle and i'll make it inside this one now here we have it so we have included one more circle within this now let's go to this xref and now here we have this drawing which should be updated now although it should update but in this case it has not yet updated because we need to save the original drawing so i'll go to the same drawing and i'll save it and now i'll return back to the xref and here we have it a new bubble on the bottom that indicates that external reference file has changed now let's click on this link that will reload the complete drawing and here we have it the external reference has been reloaded with the modified version so that's the external reference about which we will learn in this module in this video we'll learn to attach the external references in our drawing so right now we have this floor plan and in this floor plan we have this as the front direction also this is the east view the north view and the west now we have made some different views which we will insert in this drawing as an external reference so i'll first minimize this drawing and i'll look at the drawings which we will include in this drawing as external reference so here we have this east elevation and also the front elevation now we'll include both of these drawings as external references so i'll go to this drawing again and now go to this insert tab now on this tab there is a palette here references palette and all the tools which are related to external references can be found here in order to start attaching the files you need to click on this attach icon alternatively you can also use its command equivalent and that is attach so i'll click on this again and now i'll scroll down this view and make sure that desktop is selected or whatever the location from where you want to include your drawing that should be selected now we have this east elevation let's select this and click on open now we have this attach external reference window in this window the first thing that you need to look is this one the drawing name and if you want to change it you can click on the browse and locate a new drawing now we have a preview here which is not very clear for this case but if the drawing has been saved with a zoomed view you can see that preview here now in this case the scale has been set to 1 for all the x y and z axis that means the original scale will be retained if you want to change that you can do that here you can change it in different axis and if you want to keep it uniform in all the axis you can click on this checkbox also we have an insertion point option here and here it is selected as specify on screen so i'll keep it checked we want to specify the insertion point on the screen now here we have an option of reference type so now we have these two reference types the attachment and overlay in case of attachment 
the external references will be attached and all the additional references which are again attached in the external reference will be included so you can simply say that if you select the attachment radio button all the external reference file and all of its nested files will be attached but in case of overlay only the selected xref will be attached and the nested version of the files will be left out now let's look at this option here which is the path type now this one is quite important here in this case the relative path option is selected and this is a new enhancement in autocad 2018 version so prior to this the path was selected as full path now relative path and full path are the two paths which you can assign to your external references and by default relative path is selected if you select the relative path the path will start from the directory where your drawing is saved and it will go outwards so one of the advantage of using relative path is the associativity of files will not be lost even when the drive changes for example if there is a renaming of drive or if some of the drawings are moved that will not affect the external references and the drawing will still be able to find out the attached files but in case of full path if the drive letter is changed the drawing will become unable to find out the drawings which are attached so it's always recommended to keep a relative path although you can select full path or no path from this drop down now here we have the rotation angle which you can change if you want and here we have some details so click on show details and that will show you the saved path so that's the relative path you can see this dot here which indicates the directory in which your primary drawing is saved which is desktop and also the external references are on the same directory that's why we don't have anything else after that and we directly have this east elevation dot dwg which is the xref which we are going to attach now if you change this relative part to full path here we have the drive letter included and that will include the complete path and now in this case if there is any change in any of these subfolders or the drive letter the drawing will not be able to find out the east elevation or dwg external reference and that will create a lot of trouble if you are migrating your drawing later on so it's always recommended to keep it at relative path now with all of these settings click on ok and here on the cursor we have this external reference so let's click here and here we have the east elevation now when you look closely you'll find out that the fading is there in this external reference in this case the transparency has been increased so that it looks dull when compared with the original drawing you can control the fading of these external references from the references palette so click on this reference and here we have the extra fading which is set to 50 percent so you can increase this slider if you want to make it even dim and if you want to make it bright you can decrease this slider here so i'll keep it at 50 percent the default value now also whenever you attach an external reference you'll see this external reference icon on the status bar so that indicates that your current drawing has external references and you can click on this manage xref icon to open this external references palette about which we'll learn in a moment so let's go to the second attachment so i'll click on attach and i'll include the second one the front elevation and i'll include it with the same settings in this drawing now here we have the front elevation as well so we have this main drawing the floor plan and also two external references attached here in this video i will tell you about editing and clipping the external references so right now we have this main drawing which is the sample plan and drawing and also we have these two external references which are attached in this drawing now let's say that we want to modify one of these external references now in order to do that you can simply go to the references panel expand it and select this edit reference option you can either select the edit references option or you can also select its command equivalent which is ref edit so either way you can start this tool now click on the external reference which you want to modify in this case i'll click on this external reference and it will prompt you with the list here we have it we want to change it we want to modify this one now click on ok and the external reference has been selected now you'll notice that all of the drawing is faded and only this part of the drawing will remain with 
complete brightness and that indicates the active part all of these parts are now deactivated and you can modify this one so in this case we have this east elevation drawing let's modify it and i'll add one more circle over here so i'll go to home and i'll add a circle here and here we have it now we have modified this drawing let's save it so here on the end you'll see this new panel where we have the save changes and discard changes so let's click on save changes click on ok and the changes are saved not only in this external reference but they are also saved in the original drawing which was this east elevation drawing because that's the drawing which has been referenced as an external reference so if you open this east elevation you'll find a new circle has been added there now in this case we have selected the ref edit command but there are also a couple of other ways which you can use to modify these external references so one of the easiest method is selecting the external reference file so whenever you select any external reference you'll notice that a new external reference tab will open up with these options now here we have this option edit reference in place which is the same option as ref edit and it will highlight the current reference so i'll click on ok and here you can see that the current reference has been highlighted rest of the part has been dimmed and you can modify it here directly now once the modification is done you can save the changes or discard the changes so i'll save the changes click on ok and we are back to the original drawing the second method is directly opening the drawing so you can select this drawing and click on open reference now this will open a new tab here and AutoCAD is simply opening the front elevation drawing for you and it's like opening this front elevation drawing here so the drawing has been opened you can simply make the modification in this one so let's bring it to full scale and now you can modify it over here so once again I'll go to circle I'll add one more circle here and we have made the modification now we don't have any new tab for saving we need to save the complete drawing so click on this save and the front elevation drawing has been saved let's close it and we have the external reference bubble that indicates there is a change so here look at this part I'll click on this link and the part has been updated so these are the two different ways which you can use to modify your external reference in many cases the external references file are very large in our case the scale of this drawing is not very large but if the scale is extremely large and you want to show only a part of that external reference you can use the clipping tool so here in this case I'll go to this east elevation external reference and let's say that in this case we only want to include this curtain wall area we don't want to show rest of this drawing now for that I'll go to this insert tab once again and now select this clip option now select the external reference which you want to clip which is this one in this case and now we have couple of options on the command line so currently don't select any of these options simply press enter and now you can select these options so either you can select the existing polyline a polygon a rectangular shape you can make it and the inward clip so I'll select rectangular and now make a rectangle shape here and we have the clipping so whatever is included inside this rectangle is visible and rest of the part is invisible now in this case if you click on this boundary you'll see these grips which can be used to modify this clipping boundary even further and we also have this arrow grip that is the flipping direction so using this grip you can flip the part which is visible in this case if you want to hide this part and show the remaining part you can simply click on this arrow and that will show the remaining part and it will hide the part here so let's press escape key and here we have it in this case we have this clipping boundary visible now if you want to hide this clipping boundary you can use the x clip frame system variable so type x clip frame press enter and you'll see the default value 2 here change it to 0 and press enter and now we don't have that clipping boundary but still if you go to the boundary and if you select it you will find the boundary here it will be highlighted and once you press escape the boundary will once again disappear to bring it back select 
X clip frame and change its value to 2 again. So I'll select this boundary and I'll select this remove clipping. We don't want it anymore. And here we have the normal external reference. So let's press escape and here we have the drawing. In this video, I will tell you about the external references palette which can be used to manage multiple settings related to external reference. So you can open the external references palette by using the command xref and here we have this external references palette. Alternatively, you can also click on this small arrow icon and that will open the external references palette or you can click on this xref icon on the status bar to open this external references palette. Now once the palette is open, you'll see here the first object which is your current drawing. Now in this list, this is the sample plan drawing which is here and a list of complete external references. So we have the east elevation here, we have the front elevation here. So all of the external references, there is status and also the file size will be shown in this external references palette. Now you'll not only find these many information, you'll also find some additional information when you hover your cursor over the name of these xref. In this case, you'll see this flyout on which we have the name, we have the file size, the status, date and also their path. Additionally, these details can also be found on this preview panel. So here in this preview panel, you'll see all of these details which you have seen on the tooltip. Now when you select any of these external reference and let's move this palette a little bit over here. Now when you select it, you'll notice that the corresponding xref will be highlighted. In this case, the east elevation is highlighted in the drawing area. If you select the front, that will be highlighted. Now not only that, if you select an external reference and right click, you'll see a couple of options here. For example, open and that will open a new tab and the drawing or the external reference will be opened in it. So let's click on open and here we have the east elevation drawing open in a new tab. So let's close it. Let's get back here. Now I'll right click and here we have the attach option. So using this attach option, you can attach east elevation external reference once again without browsing through all of these files. So click on attach and we directly have the attach external references palette. And here you have all the same settings and also we don't need to browse the drawing. Let's close it. And let's look at other options. So I'll right click on it again. And here we have an option of unloading the external reference. So unloading is simply like hiding the external reference from your drawing area. So if you unload it, there will be this red mark and also the status will change to unloaded. And in this case, the external reference will be removed from your drawing. It's not yet deleted. You can bring it back simply by reloading it. So right click and select reload. Now, if you want to permanently remove these external references from your drawing, you can right click and select detach. So that will remove this external reference completely from your drawing. And in order to bring it back, you can simply press Ctrl Z obviously, or you need to attach that external reference. So you can select this attach option, or you can also attach it directly from here. So you can click on this attach DWG. Now go to the desktop locate the drawing which was east elevation open okay here we have it now it's brought back to the drawing and to the external references palette now if you want to make this external reference a part of this drawing the current drawing which is sample plan then you need to convert it into a block and you can do that by binding your drawing so i'll convert this east elevation xref into a block so right click on this east elevation and here we have an option of binding this so click on bind and now we have two options bind and insert now both of them are quite same with slight differences so i'll select bind in this case and click on ok and we have this drawing added here as a block now it is no longer an external reference you can see here also we don't have that drawing here in this external references list and if you go to the home tab and if you click on this insert you'll see that we now have the east elevation so in this list we are not able to see the east elevation so for that i'll click on more options and now click on this drop down and here we have this east elevation the block has been added 
So let's click on cancel. And now let's look at other options. So we still have one external reference here, which is front elevation. Now I'll right click on this one. And here we have the X ref type, which is attach or overlay. So we have already seen the difference between an attach and overlay in case of attach the external reference and all its nested references will be attached but in case of overlay only the external reference will be attached and its nested xrefs will be removed so if you want to convert the type of this external reference you can change it from here also we have the path type here which is relative in this case and it has been grayed out so this is also a new enhancement in autocad 2018 and now with the 2018 version, you can find out from this menu the exact path of the external reference. If you want to change it to absolute, you can change it from here. And now if you go back to the same option, you'll see that absolute has been activated and the relative option has been deactivated. So I'll change it to relative and we have it back to default. So now let's right click on it again. And here we have these two new options, which are again in this new version of AutoCAD 2018. Now from here, you can select a new path. And this is especially helpful if you are not able to find any of the existing external references in your drawing. So whenever you are not able to find an external reference, there will be an exclamation sign and an error. And you can simply resolve it by finding the new path. So you can click on select new path. You can locate the new external reference and it will be added in the drawing. Alternatively, you can also select the external reference and go to the saved path option here. Click on this option, click on these box or the ellipses and locate the path where you expect the new external reference to be saved. So I'll click on cancel and I'll keep these settings as they are. So this was all about the external references palette and it's quite helpful in managing your external references from a single utility. In this video, I will tell you about attaching PDFs and images as an external reference. So I'll start with the PDF. So for inserting the PDF as an external reference, go to the insert tab once again and click on attach. Now locate the PDF which you want to attach. In this case, we have this FP PDF which will attach. The preview can be found here. Now click on open and you'll see this attach PDF underlay window. In this case, we have the single page, but if you have a multi page PDF, all the pages will be listed in this preview and you can select the pages which you want to include. In this case, I'll select the one PDF here, this one, and I'll select the relative path and all the options at the default. Now click on OK. And here we have it. The PDF has been attached in this drawing. Now, in this case, there are a couple of settings that you can change and modify for this PDF and you can even convert this PDF into a native DWG file. So I'll first start with the display properties of this PDF. So I'll click on this boundary and that will bring this PDF underlay option. Now here in this case, we have the adjustment panel here. Now you can adjust the contrast just like this or you can even fade it or make it darker like this. Also here we have lots of color in this drawing. If you want to display this drawing in monochrome, click on this display in monochrome and we have it here in monochrome. All the colors are now removed. I'll click on it once again to bring it back to the normal state. Also we have the clipping option so you can clip it or you can remove the clipping. And if you want to show this underlay or if you want to hide it, you can simply toggle this option. Now, in this case, we have this enable snap option and that will allow you to snap to different points of this drawing as if it's a simple DWG entity or a native CAD file. So I'll go to home tab and I'll select line tool. And now when I move my cursor, you'll notice that we have these snaps, the endpoint snap, the midpoint snap and lots of other snaps here. These are available here. But if you once again press escape key, let's select it. And let's change it to enable snap. I'll toggle it off. And now I'll go to home tab, select the line tool. And now you'll notice that we don't have any more that snapping point. We don't have it here now. So in order to have that snapping active, you need to select that option. So I'll click on enable snap. Also, we have an option of editing the layer visibility. So you can click on edit layers 
and here we have these layers so for example let's turn off the dimensions so i click on dimensions and we don't have it here although it's not very perfect in this case we do have these errors here and that can be removed manually so i'll once again click on this dimension to turn it on and i'll click on ok now in this case this is still an external reference and it's not a native dwg file now in order to make it a completely native file you need to import it and if you want to import it as an object you can select this option so click on import as objects and now specify the area which you want to import so in this case obviously we want to include all of these objects so i'll select them all and now what do you want to do with this external reference so we have these three options either you can keep them as it is you can detach them that simply means you can delete it or you can unload it so that will temporarily hide it but you can still see it in the external references palette so i'll select this unload option so that will hide it now with the unload option simply press enter and here we have it the xref has been brought in our drawing and it is now in the native format also when you go to this external references option you'll see this external references palette on which we have the original xref here which is unloaded you can again reload it simply by right clicking and selecting the reload option but we don't need it so i'll simply detach it and now you can clean up the drawing and you can remove all the unnecessary parts in this drawing and you can work on it just like any simple AutoCAD drawing. In a similar way, you can attach images also in your AutoCAD drawing as an external reference. So once again, I'll go to the insert tab and I'll select this attach option and I'll select a new image here. In this case, I'll select this IMG image, which is a PNG file with background transparency. Now I'll click on open and with the default options, I'll click on OK now here we have it i'll click here and i'll accept the default value so i'll simply press enter and here we have it the file has been included here as an image now here also we can change multiple properties of this image so i'll click on the boundary first now we have the adjustment option the brightness the contrast and also we have the fade option so you can fade it or you can keep it at its default value now we have the clipping options and also we have the show or hide image in this case the boundary is visible but the image has been hidden now we have an option of background transparency which will only work for png files with background transparency in this case if you want to hide the background simply click on it and the background is now hidden now this is as i mentioned only applicable in case of png files with background transparency now let's press escape key and here we have it the image has been added but in this case you'll see this frame which in most cases is not required so in order to change this frame or in order to completely hide it you can simply use image frame system variable so type image frame press enter and change this value from 2 to 0 so type 0 and press enter and now we don't have that image frame anymore so once again i press enter and i'll bring it back to 2 so that the frame is visible so that was all about attaching pdf and images as an external reference file in autocad in this video i will tell you about transmitting the drawings which contain xref using the e transmit option so transmitting a drawing that contains xref is a little bit different task than transmitting a simple drawing because the drawings containing xrefs have all of their content on different folders or on different directories now you can obviously manually make a package of those drawings and contents and then you can transfer that but that will obviously take time or you can use the e transmit tool which makes your task easier so we'll e transmit this current drawing and here in this drawing we have these two external references which we have already seen and also we have this image so in total we have these three external references along with the main drawing which is sample plan end now in order to go to the e transmit option go to this application button and select this publish option now select e transmit now this will open this create transmittal window and in this window you'll see all the contents which are present in this package. So we have the external references 
we have the external plot style table if they are in the drawing and the PNG file which is the image which I have shown you also the original drawing now if you want to add even more drawings or more content to this package you can select this add file button and you can add that but that will always be added as a standalone file and it will not interfere with the main hierarchy here now in order to manage settings related to this e-transmit package you can select this transmittal setups option now we have this standard transmittal setting click on modify to change its properties and now here we have some of the properties which are related to the package now the first setting is package type which is zip so if you want to create a folder instead of zip you can change it from here but we do want to create a zip instead of a folder now if you want to keep the existing file formats which is the file format of AutoCAD 2018 you can do that or you can downgrade it so you can select AutoCAD 2013 version from here if you are sending your files to the recipient who have some previous version of AutoCAD installed or you can keep the same version which is AutoCAD 2018 so you have plenty of options here like 2013, 10, 7 and 4 and rest of the versions so I'll keep it at keep existing drawing formats that will keep it at 2018 version now here we have the transmittal folder which will be on the desktop so as you can see here if you want to change that location you can click on this ellipsis and change it and also if you want AutoCAD to prompt for a file name you can select it else leave it at the respective values now here we have some options related to the folder structure so now in this case the same folder structure which has been in use will be maintained but in the final directory that is on desktop now if you want to keep all of the files directly in a single folder you can select the second radio button and if you want to keep the original folder structure you can select the third one so i'll keep it at the first selection i'll keep this radio button checked now here we have some options and in this case we have some additional options like we can bind the external references if required and we can also purge the drawings so you can check these options whenever required and in case your drawing contains some additional font you can check this box to include those additional fonts in the package now once these settings are done click on ok and close and once again click on ok now here we have the prompt which will prompt you to specify the location where you want to save it so I'll go to desktop and here we have the name of this zip package so I'll keep this default name and I'll click on save and the package has been created so you can go to the desktop and here on the desktop we have this sample plan and package so double click on it and here we have it so all of the contents are now included in a single zip folder and you can now send this one and all the drawings and their related external references will be directly accessible to the end user so that's the standard way of sending files that contain external references so i'll close it and i'll open the drawing once again so here is our question related to this module you need to attach a DWG file, a JPG image and a PDF file in a blank AutoCAD drawing as an XREF. Then bind the attached DWG drawing in the current drawing. After following all of these steps, create an e-transmit package from the main drawing containing all of these external references and save it on the desktop. So here we have a completely blank drawing and I've also prepared these three components which we are going to insert as an XREF and I've saved them on the desktop in the questions folder. So I'll start adding with the DWG file and for that I'll go to this insert tab and I'll click on this attach option from the reference panel. Now here we have this question folder on the desktop so double click inside and here we have this test block so let's select it click on open now we need to simply attach it so I'll keep all the default options and click on OK now click anywhere and the drawing is attached now let's go to attach again and this time I'll select this image the JPG image file 
and click on open with the default setting ok there we have it now here also i'll select the default scale and rotation angle now once again go to attach and select the pdf file click on open click on ok now here we have it the pdf file is also attached although the size of this pdf file is very large so i'll just decrease its scale so i'll select it go to home tab select scale click on any point so i'll click on this lower left corner and i'll change its scale to 0.3 and press enter so there we have it let's now place it over here so now we have these three external references attached in the current drawing we can create the e-transmit package and to create the package go to this application button select the publish option and click on e-transmit now obviously we need to save the drawing first so i'll click on ok specify the location as desktop and let's give it a name so let's name it as xref and click on save now here we have in this file hierarchy everything which is included in this drawing including the pdf jpeg the drawings the fonts which are additionally used and everything here now if you want to include additional things you can go to add file and do that but we are not going to do that i'll simply click on transmittal setup click on modify and i'll modify one small thing here here i'll keep this option checked place all files in one folder and now click on ok and close and click on ok now specify the location which will be desktop and the name is xref standard.zip click on save and the package is prepared now let's go to desktop and here we have it so let's double click on it and here we have all the components of the external reference included in a single zip package which can be transmitted directly